you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. This is Voss here from the ChrisVossShow.com. The ChrisVossShow.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. I am strapped in. I am strapping and strapped in, and I am ready for this big show that we have for you today. I hope you are. If not, fasten your seatbelts, ladies. Uh, keep your arms and legs inside the, the uh, uh, seat chamber at all times. And uh, also, you know, oxygen will drop from the roof if we get a little too excited around here. I don't know what that means. Clearly, I've never been a flight attendant, but they're good people and they do a great job. So, as always, we have the most amazing guests, authors, the latest, hottest books. They they come to us hot off the presses. Sometimes they burn my fingers. That's That's how quickly they come to us, and we have them for you here. So not only are you getting the latest, fastest, most brilliant knowledge coming to you from the Chris Voss Show, it's hot, steaming hot. It's just like that wonderful bread that comes out of the bakery. You know, when you first get it in the morning and there's that butter that comes down the side of it and maybe some good basil pesto and everything else. And can you tell I haven't had breakfast yet this morning? No, that's it. Anyway, guys, as always, we're further show your family, friends, and relatives. Go, tell them to go to YouTube dot com fortress chris foss the big 130,000 linkedin group the big uh, linkedin newsletter that's always hot as well and growing fast and uh goodreads.com fortress chris foss you can see it over there today we're going to be talking about facebook's oldest intern this is going to be an interesting discussion and one of the things that uh, is something people love in life and human nature and human uh human humans being let's put it that way people who can reinvent themselves who can go through cathartic times and become something new and challenges and all the things that go into that and we're going to be talking about a uh one uh author who's put out his newest book and we're going to talk to him about his journey through that experience and what we can learn from it howard waldstriker is on the show with us today he's the author of the hottest and latest book to come to amazon wherever fine books are sold it's called facebook's oldest intern how a 60 year old fitness trainer reinvented himself with the most unlikely of companies and his book is now out. you can get it wherever fine books are sold uh, but stay away those alleyway bookstores because uh you know uh, they got cockroaches in them uh, there's no cockroaches on Amazon last time I checked. Actually, you can probably order those somewhere for feeding your to your uh, lizard or something. I don't know. You, you figure it out. It's not my problem. Anyway, Howard was first a programmer. Then after the dot-com implosion, uh, he went with his passion, and he opened up a fitness studio called Half Hour Power, the leader in 30-minute interval training. During the pandemic, he needed to shut down a studio and reinvent himself again. He became a data engineer at Facebook after 20 years as a fitness trainer. And as you can guess from the title of the book, a 60-year-old fitness trainer reinventing himself and going to work uh, in Silicon Valley. Some people uh, say there's some ageism in Silicon Valley, but somehow he pulled it off. So we'll get a story. Welcome to the show, Howard. How are you? Oh, I'm great, Chris. I really appreciate you having me on. I really appreciate you coming. So this is going to be a great story and uh, an interesting discussion. So give us your dot coms or wherever people you want people to stalk you on the social media. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have the dot com. I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn. So okay. it's Howard Wallstriker. And, you know, for some reason, I still keep up my halfhourpower.com website. I don't oh. do anything with it. I just keep it because, you know, it's something I did for 20 years and just reminds yeah. me of, of Let's what Let's give I it did. a plug. You want to give it a plug? It's up give to it you. Give it a plug, sure. But... <laughs> I mean, it's your plug. I don't know the dot com, so. Oh, oh. it's halfhourpower.com. Oh, okay, there you go. That was easy. Halfhourpowerhour dot or wait, did I say that right? Halfhourpowerhour. Half halfhourpower.com. Half hour power. I think the half hour power hour, hour I was referring to, you know, the mornings that I sit in the toilet without uh, fiber from the night before. I don't know. <laughs> getting old. That was a joke, people. Um, so anyway, Howard, uh, what motivated you want to write this book? It seems obvious, but the audience likes to hear it from you. Yeah. You know, it's a story that I think just needed to be told because it's a story of inspiration. And there, 
I mean, think about it. There are so many people right now, I'll say even over 40, maybe, you know, over 45, but even over 40 that want to change careers or maybe get laid off and need to change careers, not happy with, you know, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, and most people are like, oh, I'm too old. I can't do this, right? Mm -hmm. how, how am I going to do it? I don't even know how, to, I want to be a programmer say, I never done it before. How am I going to do it? So I feel my story gives people hope that yes, it can be done. Look, it's not easy. You mm -hmm. got to put in the work, mm -hmm. but it can be done. And you're, I mean, you kind of have something that's kind of a challenge even more so. You know, I've always worked for myself since 18. Uh, I just don't get along with uh, others. That's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> we've seen. Um, but no, it, it's very hard if you go the entrepreneur route and spend 20 years like you did building your fitness uh, trainer company. And then wanting to go back into corporate world, they don't. They don't look nicely on that sometimes. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, Chris, come on. Six years old, twenty years out of corporate work. I mean, I, I didn't even answer to a boss. I mean, I answered to myself. Yeah. And now I'm going to have to answer to a boss. I mean, l let me tell you this. I sent out resumes, right? So, so I got my skills back up to where they needed to be. Right. I took courses. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Crickets. Literally wow. nothing. And I had connections. Yeah. So, is that ageism? At the time, I was thinking, maybe, you know, I mean, look, if I was the boss and I got a resume from someone that's 60 years old, 20 years out of corporate work, and now all of a sudden wants to go back to programming, mm -hmm. would I hire him? I don't know. That's true. I mean, it, it kind of is one of those things. I hire people all the time. And, uh, you know, I used to have people, too, that would, had left the business. And sometimes uh, us uh, entrepreneur types can have trouble with, uh, you know, being bossed around a little bit because we're used to being our own bosses, um, you know. I imagine if after 35 years, if I went, tried to go back in the corporate world, they look at my resume and say, you're, you're not quali qualified to live under the Vidoc. So there's that. But that's just a personal thing, I think, towards me. Um, and who can blame them, really, when it comes down to it? So give us a little bit of origin story. Tell us about how you grew up, kind of some of uh, the paths you took that yeah. got you down this road. And, and then we'll get into some of the details of the book. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, before the first job I had out of college was with Ross Perot. Remember oh, Ross wow. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Eddie the little guy with the ears. Exactly. Ran for president, yeah. the whole deal. Now, the reason I wanted to work for him so bad, you remember the book, uh, Ken Follet on Wings of Eagles? Did you read that? No, I didn't. But it's a great book. And in that book is where, the ho where we had hostages in Iran. And some of the hostages were um, uh, Ross Perot's people. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. he sent his own team in there to get them out. And I was like, I want to, that's the guy that I want to work for. Right. Yeah. And then one day, there was a huge ad in the paper for EDS. So I applied yeah. and I'm telling you this story because it's a story of perseverance, which you must have within mm -hmm. your whole life. So what happened was I applied and I got through the first section of there and I went for my final interview. Mm -hmm. I go for the interview to make a long story short. I didn't get it. Wow. And I was like, why, why didn't I get it? I'm a perfect fit here. You know, I was going on and on. Tell me why I wouldn't leave the room. I mean, I, I wanted it that bad. Wow. And yeah. So he told me, that, well, number one, your, your hair's too long. Now, I, my hair's too long. I don't know how much it could have grown in a week since I just saw the, the, the recruiter a week ago. He said my tie was too loud. Well, I wore the same tie that I wore to the, to the recruiter a week ago. <laughs> and then he asked me some technical questions and some other stuff. I was like, really? Okay. But no, nothing more. I could see there was nothing more I can do. So I go back to the recruiter and I tell him, he goes, what? I just saw you a week ago. How could your hair have grown that much? And I wore the same tie. He says, if I can get you another interview, Mm -hmm. Will you take it? I said, of course. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. They get me another interview. They fly me down to Atlanta. I go to Atlanta. True story. I go into the office and the guy says, so you want to work for EDS? I go, yes. He goes, you know, you want to work that bad for EDS? You're hired. And that's, and that's how I got on there. That would never happen today. So was the persistence of going back the second time? He's like, this guy really wants to work for us. Yeah. No, I mean, I kept wow. Yeah, I wanted to know why I didn't get it. And, 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 and that's a lesson learned there, right? That's, that's there persistence. Go. So Persistent that paid pain. off. Yeah. As I was, you know, I had my gyms. Then the pandemic hit, as you know. Mm -hmm. And everything changed. I mean, look, I had, I had two gyms going. I did demos with Serena Williams at the University of Georgia. I trained oh, wow. Wes Welker, the Denver Broncos, Demarcus Ware. And they brought front, them, them into my gym. I did a video with the greatest doubles team of all time. If you play mm -hmm. tennis, you'll probably know who they are. But the Bryan brothers, right? We did a workout oh, wow. video. Yeah. So things were going, things were going great. Then the pandemic hit. What am yeah. I going to do? Well, I looked backwards to look forward. Sometimes that's what you need to do. 
I look backwards because mm-hmm. that's that was the skill set I had. I was a programmer, classically trained by by Perot. Mm-hmm. So I started to get my skills back up. Right. Mm-hmm. I started. You know, I was in training again, basically, right? Learning what I had to, I had to learn. I mean, things don't change that much. Let's be honest. You just have to learn the new syntax and what they do. So to make a long story short, I started sending out the resumes and nothing. And I had connections yeah. and nothing. And as far as connections, like my cousins, the chief medical officer at Johnson & Johnson, and, and they knew my name, but they would not talk to me. So wow. I, I, Oh, you shouldn't talk to your cousin either. Don't invite him for barbecue. No, well, 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 let's be. Well, first of all, I, have, I probably haven't talked to her in over twenty years. So. Well, she deserves it. No, I'm just and, kidding. And then I reach out. So I found out that they had this thing called the return to work programs. Yeah. Right. So it was started by this woman from IBM, right? Because they, they would leave to, to raise a family, and they felt you know there's a great resource. Let's get them back in. Mm-hmm. So that's how it started. And then they opened it up to everyone. So you could you mm-hmm. could went off to start a business, you could be taking care of a sick relative, whatever it is. But you had to be out of work for over two years. Okay, oh, wow. so I fit that. And I'm looking at all these return to work programs. IBM has it, Johnson Johnson, like I said, Moody's. I mean, all the big companies. Oh man, I and I was a perfect fit. Nothing. Wow. I mean, yeah. I mean, you can imagine the depression and how hard yeah. it is. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've lost your, you know, when you're in a, a self-employed person, I mean, this is really important to establish when you're a self-employed person, this has been your identity for 20 years. It's your heart, your soul, your baby, it's your identity. And I know what it's like to lose a business. And, and, you know, I lost uh, a few of mine in 2008 with the, with a great thing. I'm, our biggest company was a mortgage company and that, that didn't go well for anybody who owned a mortgage company. Um, and, so you're losing your identity as well. So it's not just like you lose a job. I mean, I, I don't want to discount what people feel when they lose a job because they do put their identity into it. But uh, being self-employed, that's a whole new level of identity loss. And so it's it's uh, there's an emotional toll there. I think that's much bigger. Oh, you you, you hit you hit the nail right on the head. Or the head I'm on seeing. the nail. <laughs> Both. Both, both. I mean, I lost my identity. That was me. I was the half hour power guy. I mean, it, yeah. it was great. So what was I going to do now? My wife had a business. So mm-hmm. we talked about possibly doing that, but uh, I don't think that would go over well. Yeah, she doesn't like you that much. No, no, no. Oh. So I'll never forget this, Chris. To this day, I remember this. I was lying in bed. It was a Sunday morning and I'm scrolling through my phone and my wife looks over to me. What are you doing? What, what, am I, what do you think I'm doing? I'm looking here for job stuff here. There's a position here that I'm like, Man, I'm like two. I got two out of the seven things they want. Oh, Number wow. one, barely have it, and it's the best of the best. It was Facebook, right? Well, so she nudged me to uh-huh. apply. So the lesson learned here is you have to have somebody in your corner, whether Definitely. it's your wife, your husband, a, a support group, someone. Because if she didn't nudge me, I never would have applied. Good wives are good at that. There's a lot of nudging that goes on. A lot. A lot of nudging, a lot of nudging. And if not, then there could be violence. So right, exactly. I'm just teasing. No, you know. no, but you, you, I, I understand. She might, so she I might apply. wave that. Uh, she might wave that. Uh, you know, the old, the old comics where they wave the anyway, the the roller pin at you. Anyway, oh boy, that's a it's like so, a that's a whole show. People like we don't remember that in in cartoons. I remember it. So I, I applied, and I didn't think I had a chance in hell. Right. Yeah. The next day, I get an email. We'd like to set up a, an interview with you. Nice. Okay, first one ever. And, and, and it's the best. It's Facebook. Now, understand this. The difference between Facebook and EDS, it was com- polar opposites. Oh, yeah. Right? So think about it. EDS was, you know, dress code, you know, mm-hmm. suit and tie. IBM sort of material. Material. The old then, IBM black suit, or, black tie sort of thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then listen to this. If you went to the bathroom without your jacket on, it was grounds for termination. Are you shitting me? I'm not shitting. That is the old it idea. Ground- if you ever, anytime, really, anytime you left your desk, you had to have your jacket on. Wow. Man. I don't know if anyone that got fired, but that's what I heard. Wow. If your hair got too long, there was a barber in the basement. Oh, serious? Oh, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. HR would be like, headquarters, headquarters. Room. at the main headquarters. If your tie wasn't the right tie, you had to go out and get another yeah. one. I mean, it was very strict, very strict. But you know what? Those was the old IBM days. You know, that's exactly. how they, that's what it, it was. was a, it was it a there. culture. Yeah. yeah. Totally, totally. That's what he wanted. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that's that's why he built such a great company. So, and Facebook's the complete opposite. You wear whatever the hell you want. Yeah, you, you show up in a blanket and anything, pajamas and anything. wander around. No, no, nobody cares. So, I make it through that. They set me up for this next interview. And now, this next interview is hard, Chris. 
you got um, five questions for programming and you have 20 minutes to answer them. You got five questions for the database stuff and you got 20 minutes to answer it. So <laughs> do the math on that. That's not a lot of time. And as I was practicing, man, I was slow as hell. I, I would get it right, but it would take me half an hour just to get one. So the day comes, I was so nervous. I was shaking and I'm not, an, oh. I don't get nervous. Yeah. I was so nervous. I, I, if you ask, I couldn't, if you asked me how to, you know, two plus two, I'd have to use my fingers. That's how nervous I was. I was sweating. It doesn't happen. So to give the guy props, he calmed me down. I took a breath, right? Got myself <laughs> calm and I made it through that. I got like three out of the five, right? With his help. But then I got the same thing on the other side. So I thought, ah, come on, you know, no way. It's probably like a C, right? Yeah. You know, if you remember, you know, like from math class, something like that. So yeah. I thought, I don't got it. I got F, so. You got F. Yeah, well, yeah, a... we'll get to that in a bit. Yeah. So I told my wife, I gave her the uh, play by play. Yeah, what are you going to do? Next day, I get another email. We'd like to move forward. The final wow. interview. Wow. Now, and I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you after this. Happens. So we're moving, we're moving forward. Now, this one's for almost four hours, right? Four, mm -hmm. four different people. I have two technical, a three technical, and a, a behavioral. They always ask you, the, you know, tell me about a time when you blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I did, did really well in the first two technical. It just, I just got it. I got lucky. The behavioral, so-so. Uh, Could have went either way. The last one, <laughs> I had no clue what the guy wanted me to do. I was terrible. <laughs> and I thought I blew it yeah. right then and there. I can hear the frustration in his voice. I was this close, Chris, to just say, man, just, it's yeah. not for me. <laughs> Forget you, but I didn't, thank God. Good. So that ends. I go take a shower just to relax. And of course, in the shower with the wa water on me, I was like, oh, that's how you do it. So that was. Oh, the, you remember what the what the question was? That, yeah, I remember what it, yeah. what it was. I wrote it down after I, I wanted to make, see if I can do it. I'm mean, again, that's, that's, that's the perseverance. That's the lesson here that there I'm, you go. I'm Problem bringing solving. out. Right. So the next day, again, my phone rings. I don't answer it because I have a habit of not answering my phone. My wife hates that, by the way. It could be right. Well, next you're to looking me. for a job, eh? Yeah, but, I, yeah, but you know, I still don't answer it. You know, I can't that see. Could the, be, you know, it could be why you were struggling. I don't. I'm just be, kidding. It could be. It could be. So I, I listened to the message, and it was the recruiter. Mm -hmm. She said, "Howard, I need to talk to you. Call me tomorrow." Well, okay, you, so, so I'm assuming that she's not <laughs> leaving me a message to tell her to call her, tell me that I'm not. Yeah, that I'm not getting it. I call her up the next day. Howard, you were very interesting. This has never happened before. You had, yeah, you had two people that were very strong hire. One that was, ah, I can go either way. And one that was extremely very weak, do not hire. Mm -hmm. We talked to the managers and we said, you know, based on the circumstances, the pandemic, and it's a long day, we'd like to give you a benef the benefit of the doubt. We'd like to make you an offer. Wow. Not only, yeah, not only an offer, a sign-on bonus as well. Wow. <laughs> I know for me, I was like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. I had a smile from ear to ear. My mother-in-law was here at the time too. I came out and I said, I got it. Yeah, yeah. But this is the return to work program, right? So I'm the intern now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not an employee yet. Now this is going to be a 16 week program. Mm -hmm. And and during this program, you do real work. They train you, and then hopefully you show that you can do the work, and then they make you an offer as a full time employee. Oh. So and now here, I have a mentor. Mm -hmm. right, who, by the way, was like 26 years old. And the big joke was, can you be with my wife was, you know, can you believe I'm training this old guy? I mean, <laughs> got to deal with that. Did you just yeah. run around and say, hey, get off my lawn? You yeah, kids. whatever. Right. Or maybe he texted to his wife. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. And then you have a buddy and you have a, you have a cohort group. But what was interesting was in this cohort group, there was 13 people in the cohort, right? So other people, you know, in, in this return to work program. I was the only male. And I was the only American born. Which, oh, so a lot yeah. of those, uh, what do they call those? The 103s or the, the where they, you know, they have the visas? They have the visas, yeah. Oh. Well, a lot of, most of them were, uh, some had the visas, but most of them were American citizen, but, okay. they, they, but they were born in, you know, like we have India and uh, uh, other countries. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget this, just to it kind of put me into the whole Facebook communications. So we had this orientation. Everyone had to go to it. It doesn't matter if you're VP or program, whatever you do. And they mm -hmm. split us into groups of 10. And you had to tell everyone about yourself, you know, the job you're doing, what, et cetera, et cetera. And they wanted to use you the month you were born, you know, January, February, to go to see who goes first. So we all come up, and there were 10, 10 of us in that square where you see everyone's faces, nothing. No one said a word. And I hate that. 
So mm-hmm. I took the lead and I mm-hmm. said, okay, I, I took the lead. I told, I talked about myself first. I said, who, anyone January, February, March. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, I'm February, I'm February. Okay, go ahead. So <laughs> people kinda, forgot their birthdays? Of the month, you know, they were, look, these people are brilliant, but they're not, the communication skills aren't I'm, the best. I'm 55 and I can remember the month. I just can't remember the year. <laughs> right, maybe they weren't paying, maybe they weren't paying attention. Maybe I'm not but, wanting to remember the year. Yeah, but to go back, so they put me in this group called the the chats. You know, you've been on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm on every day. In fact, You're I on every day. Okay. regularly too. So right. So, so I'm in this place called the groups. You know, you have a movie groups, those type of groups, songs, things. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. So that's that's what I was a part of. So to make the long story short, I had to do. I did all the work. I had to get all this data for them, for Zuckerberg and the executives to look at. Then we created. This is what my job was. And then I created from that data, I would create visualizations to show them, you know, dashboards, line charts, bar hmm. charts, things of that nature. And that and that was the whole deal there. Hmm. Now, the problem is it's very difficult there because you can't Google anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. It's their own tools. I'm, I, I'm wondering if I should be rolling on the ground at that joke. That's funny. I That's got to be the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. So let me just clarify that because I want to understand that. You can't Google anything. Like you, you have to use the internal search things. You can't. Is Can you use Google at any point? Yeah, in yeah, yeah, Facebook? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not because you can't use Google. <laughs> okay. I, <just laughs> that's, I think I know that's what you were coming from. It's because <laughs> they have their own proprietary tools. Okay. Can you so, bing it? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so you have um, to learn. You have to learn their stuff. Okay. So time goes on, and I talk to my manager every week. Right, we had these one-on-one meetings, and I kept asking, "How am I doing? Any red flags? I want to make sure." And you know, I'm telling you right now, they it was I was you know, they wanted me to succeed, hmm? with, with, with without a doubt, they that wanted me to succeed. Too. There was no there was no ageism, there was no they didn't care. Mm-hmm. They really didn't. I, mm-hmm. I I got nothing. No vibe about that at all in, mm-hmm. fa- in fact i really think the reason they brought me on to, to try me out was because of my entrepreneurial uh background yeah, yeah. right think yeah. about that you're a problem solver you're a leader mm-hmm. i mean there's a lot of qualities that come from being an entrepreneur you're a heavy alcoholic no i'm just possibly. kidding possibly. possibly i think it's me <laughs> um are you to me i don't know not anymore you don't Go sleep ahead. you know you don't sleep yeah you you slave 24 7 over all of your work uh you lose all your hair um yeah yeah you eat bad yeah. food you know it's all the things you do in a work all that and then in addition to that you think of things differently that's right? true I, I i asked different questions so maybe that was the reason that they you know i was the outlier there a total outlier and uh i'll tell you about that when we get to this first meeting that i had so yeah. i'm talking with my manager and then I'm, it comes to the end of the program i have to give a presentation this is it this is this is the final thing there and i kicked ass in the presentation right and I led it with this. See if you know the, you probably know the answer. Maybe you'll see if your listeners know this. It was a very famous quote. It was, and it went like this. Who, um, who said, you know, young people are just smarter? Do you remember that? I uh, don't. In fact, uh, it's not true. Anyway, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> Youth is wasted on the young. No, I'm yeah, just so, kidding. So it was Mark Zuckerberg that, oh, that's, that said that. that. I oh, led okay. my presentation with that and, and did an awesome job in that. And I agreed with him because I looked around. These people, they, they, they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Sure. But they don't, what they don't have was the life experience That's that true. I was bringing to the table, and which is what I thought possibly why they you know, brought me on there. Because I had a huge thing of imposter syndrome. You know, why, why me? Because I, I was the oldest by far. <laughs> so I'm waiting to hear if I become a full-time employee. I'm getting like, oh, come on, man. What the f-? You know, he, he keeps, oh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Finally, I get a text from my manager. We have a meeting. And I, we get on, and I look right at him. I said, don't torture me. <laughs> yes or no? And I swear to God. I, I just want to know. No, don't give me any back talk. You know, yes or yeah. no? Howard, congratulations. I'd like to make you offer as a full-time oh, employee. And that's how I became a full-time employee. There you go. Well, this but is more, awesome. Yeah, and there's more to it because now... He didn't have a spot for me on his team. Oh. So they had to put me on another team. And I ended up going on what they called the newsfeed team. So when you go on Facebook, the first thing you see, that's the newsfeed. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, you put comments in, you put your posts in, you see all the ads. That's the newsfeed. Yeah. And what I did there was what was called meaningful social interactions. So say there's a comment. 
and you do a you you know someone puts a like to your comment that's worth a certain number of points hmm. maybe you put in a you know a, a two words certain number of points the most is five words or more so i would get the data for that and uh, and worked with that but i want to and then and then so what happened was i was there for a while and i was doing really well i really was i was working hard you know so, so in fact i felt i was teaching them things hmm well that's like, good well like communi communicating and talking and pushing back a little bit when in, when needed be not just taking everything and saying okay 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 which i felt that they needed yeah came, came time for my performance review mm -hmm. almost a year <laughs> And the way they do it there is very interesting. Your manager has to defend you, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you could be doing a great job. I hope he likes else. you, because yeah. otherwise it's going to go right. bad. <laughs> I hope he likes you. I think everyone liked me. I really yeah, do. Yeah. I, I, got, I got along with everybody there. Yeah. So I said to the guy, I said, look, I should have a redefines expectations, the highest one, because you have no one to compare me with. Who are you going to compare me with? These other 25 to 30-year-old wizards? I mean, yeah. come on. Of course he laughed. And said, no, no, no. And then went on like that. But I want to tell you, we, we talked about James Conn earlier. And I want to tell your... Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to tell your audience the difference, like the age gaps and, and how, how things happen. Mm -hmm. So remember when James Conn passed away, right? Yeah, so we have, we have a chat group. So I put up a picture of James Conn. Mm -hmm. And I said, rest in peace, Sonny Corleone. Right, the, the part that he played. Hmm. So this guy, kid in the group, <laughs> responds to it and says, wow, I thought the only thing James Conn was famous for was Elf. <laughs> I, Elf, the movie, Elf. I don't know what to say. You don't know point. Elf. Okay. I'm so, no, no, I know Elf. I know Elf, but I, I'm so disappointed in the youth now. I, I'm just giving up. Really. Well, so well, I I responded back and I said uh, I said your homework this weekend is to watch Godfather Part yeah. One and Part Two, <laughs> right? Okay, and no. then it was, <laughs> and then it was all about my eyes. It was oh. always my eyes. Mm -hmm. They they put documents up and I can never see. Oh yeah, Those make it bigger, yeah, a little more vocals and shit. Exactly, a little more, yeah. a little more. I, was, I mean, call an elderly person's right, for, uh, elderly person's right. But I got so sick and tired of of, of doing that. Mm -hmm. But you know, when we have these meetings, I, I had a habit of looking people up just to compare. Because, like I said, I felt I was an outlier and I had imposter syndrome. And I'm mm -hmm. looking at these people's, you know, colleges. One guy, PhD from Harvard, three degrees from Stanford, you know, computer science from Cal Berkeley, MBA from UCLA, mm -hmm. and then me. Mm -hmm. I, it took me, you know, four schools to get to get my degree. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm the outlier possibly that they wanted. So the lesson here. Is that I hope you know people can get from is the fact that I just didn't give up and I just kept going, mm -hmm. and even though they didn't have Google, it what taught what it taught me was I can do it. Yeah, you I know this brings it. up a good point too. Um, you know that's what entrepreneurs do. We just keep pushing through. We just keep looking for resources and and uh, things, and, and so we push through. But it's also a great metaphor for you know people to uh, who struggle with stuff. You know. Just keep trying. Just keep coming back, you know, trying right. to make it work. That That's exactly it. And that's the bottom line. You know, thick skin, keep trying, keep pushing. You, you know, my mother always said, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? It, it only takes one. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep going, which brings me mm -hmm. to my next point is, so then I was thought I was doing well, but I don't know, maybe I wasn't because now all of a sudden they want me to, I'm not, they, they claim, a manager claims I'm not doing the work at the level that they brought me in at. Mm. okay well you knew what you were getting when you brought me in i mean i may not be the fastest but i get everything done right sure. you can count on me all the time okay mm -hmm. howard we're going to give you this list that you have to do you have to accomplish and you have you know a week to do each one so i said is this a performance improvement improvement plan that's what they call a pip he said no no you would have heard from uh hr, HR. For us. <laughs> that's never yeah, good so i, I was worried things. about that right yeah yeah those, those aren't good when they, you get those aren't them. good so anyway, to make a long story short, I did really well. And then they, they put me on this new, this new project called Avatars, right? Mm. Where, you know, you create an image of yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. and the data scientists were my partners and the product managers and all that. And they gave me great reviews because I was really mm. working hard and doing great. I thought, mm -hmm. okay, man, I'm going to get this meets all at my next review. Mm -hmm. So time goes on. And uh, I said to my manager again, 
because we had this talk. I said, why, why, why do I have to go for meets all? Why, let's, I like to shoot higher. Because being an entrepreneur, I always, went, I always wanted to give more to the customer, right? Wow. Always leave them happy. Mm -hmm. He goes, Howard, think of it this way. He goes, you own the gym, right? I go, yeah. He goes, when someone comes in to lose weight, do you automatically have them lose 20 pounds or five pounds? <laughs> okay. We'll start, we'll, we'll start from the bottom. I, I get you. And, we're, and, work, and work our way up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm doing great, doing all that. Then, of course, the whole uh, layoff deal happened. So I never had a chance to find out if... I would have made that meets all oh, uh, requirement, go. right? That they wanted, but something else that they did there, Chris, and a couple of things I forgot to forgot to mention was they gave me a coach. Oh wow! It's from Better Up, and because my wife is getting sick and tired of listening to me every day. I mean, she, that that ended the first night of that that ended the first week of your marriage. So that ended the first week. For most guys, yeah. <laughs> someone else to talk to, yeah, man. Really. So I had someone else to talk to now. I had this better up coach. And you know what she told me? Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting lesson and it helped me tremendously. She said, Howard, make believe this is your business. You know, you had your business, you had your gym. You're running your business right now. You didn't know everything from doing that, like mm -hmm. you just mentioned. You figured it out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. Let me, let, this is my business. I'm, 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 let me run it like that. Yeah. And that just made my whole, what they call the sage, take over instead of, and, and got out of my whole imposter syndrome. Like I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I'm not smart enough. Um, things of that nature. You know, is that, is that some good advice, do you think, for people? I mean, we, we've had authors on the coma on the show that have talked about imposter syndrome. I know there's a lot of people that uh, talk about it, write about it. A lot of women that I see, women coaches that coach on it. Um, is that, is that uh, the way to resolve that and some of your advice on it? I don't know if it's the way to resolve that, but for me, mm -hmm. it worked. There you go. You know, I had a business, and that's, and that's what she went with. Mm -hmm. The fact that, like you, like we talked about, the fact that I did all this stuff because I didn't know half the things that I did, I had to learn mm -hmm. to running a business, constant marketing, constant this, constant that, and that was the mindset that I put myself in when I had to do something. I was like, okay, I'm the boss here, I'm the owner now, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna and I'm gonna do it like I'm the boss. You know, if I don't get this done, the lights get shut. Something, you know, something of that nature. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very disciplined like that. I mean, you remember um, we talked about perseverance, but the reason I say that all the time, you remember Jim Valvano. No. The Jim Valvano was the basketball coach for North Carolina State. Oh, okay. And he, he died like just a couple of years after coaching, and he gave this great speech, and he always talked about perseverance. That's, that's, that was the bottom line, and I've always kept that with myself. Perseverance. Mm -hmm. never gave, it's, all, it's all the same thing for reinventing yourself. Yeah. Improving. Because everybody wants to give up. And you, 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 you got to have the number For me, the number one thing was my wife. Mm -hmm. You got to have a support group. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you want to lose weight. There's no difference, right? Yeah. And I had a gym. The number one thing I would tell people when you want to lose weight, you must be in a support group, whether yeah. it's people, other people in the gym, a friend, whatever it is, because that will help you. You're working out with somebody. Okay, you have, you have someone that you're working out with. You're going to work out harder. You're going to continue to move. You can't do things by yourself. Yeah. You, and, and they provide an accountability to you as well. Where um, you know, they keep you accountable. They go, Hey, you know, you're getting off your thing and how you doing and checking in. You know, because we have slides sometimes we're all like, oh, yeah, I'll eat a Big Mac today and and you're just like, Oh, well, you're gonna see results tomorrow. So that's important. Right. So yeah, yeah exactly. So you go through the you go through these mass layoffs that they did where they really kind of seem from my understanding is they overhired a lot of people, a lot of companies kind of overhired and hoarded people. And uh you go through the mass layoff and then you decide to write the book. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I wanted to write the book because you know, it was just the experience that other people are going to have. Mm -hmm. Right? Like we talked about, you know, whether you're over 45, I think even over 40 already that's get that's mm -hmm. getting up there with as far as companies are concerned. And you know, and maybe you're not happy with what you're doing or you get laid off, you want to do something else, whatever it is, you you you're going to be getting another job, possibly changing careers. And I wanted to show people that it can happen. I mean, if I can do it at my age and over 20 years out, don't forget, I didn't have, I had, I was working for myself. Yeah. That you can do it. It's motivation. It's inspirational. Mm -hmm. And, 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 of, and, and of, of all companies, Facebook, of all, of, of, of all yeah. places. Yeah. 
I, I mean, mean look, they notoriously hire young people. So, I mean, just getting a the job there yeah. excelling it's, it's, is... Yeah, but they're getting better on that. They're trying to go a little older. And obviously, I put the age up there a little bit. But look, Chris, if it was some other company, some bozo company, ABC company, I never would have written a book. Hmm. But well, why is that? I mean, because, is just... because everyone knows Facebook. Mm -hmm. Facebook is notoriously known, like you said, for bringing in young people. And the average age there was 30 five maybe 34 something like that mm -hmm. it, they don't go with the older and, and the fact that zuckerberg gave that quote younger mm -hmm. people are just smarter i mean they just don't hire the older people but i bought them something different and they there saw that yeah i i'm a big proponent of this we've had uh we've had you know we've seen a lot of different things out there um with people uh you know it, 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 there's a life experience that you have like you know anytime i see a 20 year old life coach i giggle a little bit because i know how little life you've lived that's right at 20 years old i don't want to knock you too hard but uh i mean come on man life coach like you know you haven't lived yet uh you have 20 years so i don't know what are you gonna do tell people you, know, you pooped in your diapers and how not to i don't know i'm just being a shit but you know to me a life coach is someone who's been through at least a good portion of their life uh but uh you know we need to not take people for granted and realize that people that have life people that survive for a long time in life have some pretty good life skills because uh we wouldn't be here if we didn't and there's things that you can learn. You know, there's there's a reason we treat people that are older and we and if we're smart, we look to them for wisdom and experience because history tells us what the future is going to be. History is destiny a lot of times. And so if you don't talk to people who know history and been through history, well, you're probably not going to know how the future is going to turn out. You're probably going to fumble the ball and make us go through it again. So there's that. But you got a lot of great reviews in the book. In fact, you inspired a lot of people, which I think I thought was amazing on some of the reviews I was reading. Oh, nice, nice. But also, I want to bring up the point of, you know, you have to take care of yourself. If you That's need true. to lose weight, lose weight. Look, mm -hmm. you, you can look look young. Don't don't act old. Don't be old. Because mm -hmm. it's all in, it's all in the mind. It's all a mindset, and and, yeah. that's, and and that's how it is. In fact. You know, my daughter, uh, my kids, I mean, everyone was, when I would tell people I worked at Facebook, the reactions were you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's hilarious. They, they, they were shocked. Yeah. So she, yeah. one time we went to play tennis and uh, she's working for this company and she had to tell the company something about herself that you know no one else knows. <laughs> so she, she looked at me with that mischievous <laughs> grin that she always has. And she said, what she said was my dad, and she was very proud, is the old, oldest employee at facebook and wow. I, I was so proud I, I don't know if i was the oldest but I, I'm, I'm definitely definitely was mm -hmm. top five there you go you know, i mean that's yeah. that's that's an awesome story and I, you know you've done something else that's quite exemplary that a lot of people aren't able to do you sat down and wrote a book and you published it so <laughs> That by there uh, deserves some clapping as well. Trust no, me, I, I know I, what that's like. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's, it's uh, not easy. It's not easy, but it's a story that I, I think it was great. You, you saw the movie. I mean, you've seen that movie. Uh, it was made up, of course, with Owen the Wilson. The Facebook and, movie? No, nah, the Google one. Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. I didn't. I the, skipped that. The, the internship. Anyway, yeah. but on the real life. Yeah. This is, this is, this is what was happening there. And, and Chris, I felt I, I had a teammate. And he said to me, once we got the layoff, he goes, Howard, I'm going to miss our team meetings. Now. You made our team meetings so much better. <laughs> so I felt I taught them something as well. I mean, communicating and talking and not just taking everything for granted and doing just because you, someone tells you to do it doesn't mean you, it, 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 you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that, you know, we're, I think we're more comfortable on our skin than young people. And I say that because I was that person who, when I was young, I was very uncomfortable being in my skin and everything. And, uh, and you know, I, you're, you're, you're kind of self, um, you, you worry about yourself. You think about yourself, you know, you're, you're kind of really into yourself. And so I think that, uh, you know, as someone who's older, we're a little bit more comfortable in our skin, or maybe we just think we are one of the two. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're right. Cause you're right. When I was younger, I probably <laughs> wouldn't have, said things i would say now right i mean yeah that's true you're I'm like age. You're, i'm with age 
Yeah, you got that age going for you. So that makes all the difference in the world. So uh, what's the future for you right now? I mean, you've, like I say, you've crossed the Rubicon and become an author. One of the things I loved about becoming an author was I found out how hard it is and why the bar is so high for people to cross it and why people, you know, hold you in regard. They go, you're an author? And I'm like, yeah, it's, I mean, it was, it was hard, but it wasn't that big of a deal, really. And and they're like, I've tried so much. And and so it's kind of a new thing. Are you going to write any new books or what's what's the future for you? Yeah. So actually two things, potentially. Number one is I thought potentially I might look at possibly getting, you know, speaking and, and giving motivational talks to people that go. are in this situation, telling them my story and, and lessons learned. The second part is, is well, now I'm, I'm looking for another job again. I'm back in the same position I was in. But, but the big difference is that I have Facebook on my resume. Mm-hmm. And that opens doors. It does. That, that, and that you're an author doors. too. Trust me, that author shit. That author work. stuff opens up. And I was thinking of the second book, potentially. I'm not so sure. I, I was thinking about doing it in the first book, but maybe the second book, more of like the lessons learned or something of that nature. Lessons I learned while working at Facebook. The things yeah. that Facebook taught me. Yeah. There something you go. Like that, that people yeah. can really use. A roadmap that. that people can yeah. use. Plus, it's got, you know, the word Facebook has got a real. Uh, you know, SEO, search engine optimization, meta. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, you, you know, they go by, I'm, you know, look, they, they go by the name meta now, right? You know that. Yeah. Maybe right? you could try and interview Zuck and, uh, you know, talk to him about lessons you learned and how it was integral to his company and, you know, it'd be a good PR thing for them too, you know, I would. So let me tell you, now that you brought that up, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. So I, f- I was writing some articles first when I was first there for a little bit over a year. Mm-hmm. And I sent them to the lady who was in charge of the return to work program. Mm -hmm. She was like, Howard, these are incredible. Oh my God. They wanted me to be the face for the return to work program. So then they sent it off to the higher executives. Right. And everyone loved it. But then of course they kind of was shutting down everything, Mm -hmm. but it's good. It would be like you just said, it's good PR for them because I have nothing, nothing but great things to say about the company and my experience. Yeah, draft it and draft it. See me, you know, send him a thing and see if Mark will uh, come on there or, uh, you know, one of the other people, Cheryl Sandberg, I think, left. Sandberg left, Sandberg left. And so I, I might send them the book, actually. I'll send it to Zucker, but, you know, to the whole, let them read it. Yeah, maybe, maybe, come on. I mean, he's, he's kind of, he does some cool things every now and then with just about anybody or something. It seems. He was on, yeah, he was on know. Joe Rogan. <laughs> maybe you can show up on the metaverse and you can talk Have you ever on been the on Huh? Has he been no. on your show? I don't think we've ever invited him. Maybe we should invite him. Has he put out a book? I don't think so. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. I, I've been suspended so many times on Facebook. It's not even funny. And, <laughs> I don't know and, how that crap works, man. Believe me. I don't know how people. I won't blame you. For nothing, you get suspended. Yeah. I've, I had a friend suspended the other day for saying happy birthday. The bot, <laughs> the AI automation thing is crazy. Uh, you know, but that's another story. So. Right. Now they have more layoffs coming in. You know, more tech people will be laid off at the end of April. Oh, wow. And a yeah. whole bunch. And some people from my team, I guess, more. Because they let go of everyone in the return to work. That's done. Yeah. And then, of course, they'll have some more in May. So Maybe you can uh, write a book on how to uh, start your own business. Because a lot of those people, a lot of those people that are brilliant, that got laid off from Facebook and Twitter, you know, those guys in times like this, they go build the next Facebook and right. Twitter. Right. Those guys yeah, are smart. Right. And, and, smart. They, and they know how you know, the shit that they got to work on Facebook or Twitter, pick your tech company to work. And those guys usually go start something better. Right. Um, and so this is the the great time. Even VCs know that. Well, um, I'll tell you this though, is a lot of the tools that are out there mm-hmm. have been created by ex pe- people that worked for Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. That we yeah. use. I thought maybe, you know, who knows, man, maybe, maybe this would be a great movie as well. In my opinion, it might be 60 year old, uh, 60 year old fitness trainer uh, goes to work for Facebook. You know, yeah, you just got a backstory. You got James whole... Conn's sadly passed away, so you'll have to I find know, somebody else I to know. play you. I know. <laughs> I, I Al Pacino's still around. Yeah, but he, he looks really old. <laughs> oh, wow, man. I, you know who'd be that's good? Some cold shit right there. You know, you know who'd be good? No, Chris? Uh, I think Paul Rudd would be the perfect, perfect. Paul person. Rudd? There you go. People like Paul Rudd. People you like know, him. a couple days ago, um, we had on the show uh, one of the guys who wrote the original movie, uh, The Devil's Advocate. 
he wrote the book yeah. for it. Love and that he's, movie. He's written a few uh, others. In fact, he's written 150 books. He's been pretty prolific. Um, maybe you could get, uh, you know, Al Pacino. I mean, he still played great in that movie. The, the, um, the thing is, my, my wife wants me to get another job first. <laughs> That's true. Well, that's how wives work. Um, wives they don't like you sitting around the house. You you bother them. Um, and no, I'm still in training, man. I'm keeping my skills up. I'm there you go. Keeping myself ready. There you go. And you put out a book. I mean, seriously, it is hard to put out a book. It is hard. It, to write it was hard. I was. Then there's the editing part. <laughs> I mean, the editing. I had to have an editor. Then you have editing to was cover. The this, the that. Yeah. But like I told you, I, I kept a journal the whole time. Oh, that's smart. I mean, I didn't tell you that. I kept the journal every week. Smart. I would write. In, I would write about my experience in, my, in the journal. Yeah, maybe you should uh, oh. publish the edits of that and kind of walk through the experience and you that's know what maybe. The book was. Yeah. Okay. So okay. All right. Because yeah, I mean, you could. I, there's more to it that I don't say, and I'm not telling everything to everyone because I got to be careful of what I say. Yeah, you don't want to. I can't say some things that happened there. Yeah. Um. So, and you want to make it fun it's a quick fun read you'd like it yeah i definitely would well it's, yeah, a, it's an hour read be. but it, it takes like an hour and it's a it's a fun read there you go so yeah you just need to figure out who's going to play in the movie and maybe now you should write the screenplay because you need a screenplay for the movie well, yeah I, I talked to a f high school friend of mine who's in hollywood and does screenplay and, and oh, yeah, we're talking about that i said why don't you write the screenplay man you know, it, you could even make it a good comedy. Like, you do it like oh, that o Owen Wilson drama. thing where, yeah, comedy drama. You bring Owen Wilson in. Those guys are funny. And it's like it's like the movie Wedding Crashers with uh, yeah. Owen Wilson. And, Owen Wilson uh, and Vince Vaughn. Same thing. Vince Vaughn. Great actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, funny. Yeah. 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 And you just make it like movie. old school. Only it's uh, Facebook. Old Facebook or something. I don't know. You yeah, could well, be, well, you could well, be the character Google, Blue. So Facebook. <laughs> you could be the old school character Blue in the movie. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, just kidding. Don't Ain't be that guy. That. He dies, but he dies happily. Um, when, does, so, when does it? When does this go live now? Uh, we'll go live in about four or five days, but we'll uh, cover that in the green room. So uh -huh. as we go out, uh, give us your dot coms wherever you want people to find you on the interwebs, please. Yeah. So the best place to find me is going to be LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Wall Striker. Um, if you want to see what I did in my past when I was a fitness trainer, I have. I still keep my website up. It's called HalfHourPower dot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can always search Facebook's oldest intern. There you go. Let me ask you, do you ever think about going back and doing the fitness thing again, or are you going to uh, stick on this path? So what I didn't say was, um, so Chris, the pandemic for me actually was almost a godsend. I mean, I hate to say oh, that, but let me, let me say why. I was really getting burnt out. Yeah. Of, of the gym i had all those gyms going and i was trying to franchise and there was so much i was really getting burnt out with it and so this happened and you know i'm a kind of believer in fate i mean there was a reason i got the job at fate. it's your fault there was a pandemic no no but You're i won't go back your to it. fate, buddy it, it's so it's especially today it's so hard to more constant marketing there's a gym on every corner like a restaurant that's true there's my dogs have one in the in the backyard. Everyone, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every the kids. I mean, people that don't all everyone thinks they're a trainer. Yeah. I have to pay them just to go back there. The dogs. Yeah. 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 What kind Everyone's of dogs? Everyone's got one. What they're Siberians. Two? Two, yeah. Siberian Husky is nice. Yeah. And they they're they I mean, if I don't pay, then I get bitten. So yeah. <laughs> it's it's so like motivating it. though to work out. Anyway, go ahead. You, you go through the cathartic thing of the of the uh, of the crisis, and you you find a better self. Is that? No, it was just I don't know. I mean, look, like you said, entrepreneur. You know how you have your ups and downs. And I love being yeah. my own boss, doing my own thing. I used to go, yeah. I train people in Mexico. I go to the spa, and mm -hmm. I go there once a year. I do all that stuff. I must have been in one of my moods. Who knows? But um, <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> all right. I, mean, I had investors. I mean. Yeah. It, Whatever. It's a lot of work. It's a lot, a lot of work. work. It's a lot of work. I got to tell you, I, I I did my companies for twenty years, and and then uh, I I moved to Vegas, and uh, uh, a company said, "Hey, we'll pay you to build a mortgage company here." And I was like, uh, "This is kind of nice, man. I don't have to lose sleep at night. This is kind of cool." Yeah. And I had all my other companies, so I did that for them. But yeah, it was kind of nice. I'm like, "Hey, man, I can actually go to punch out a five and go home for a thing." So yeah. there you go. Vacation. Um, you can take vacation. Yeah, and vacations. Not, and I yeah. have to pay it's my weird. trainers. <laughs> Sick days and stuff. What's going on there? I mean, you know how it goes. Um, yeah. I mean, take a look at the website. See, you can see what I did. I mean, it's an old website, but you can see.
There you go. Well, it's been wonderful you having the show, uh, Howard. Inspiring and some lessons learned. People should order your book wherever fine books are sold. Order it up today. It just came out March 6, 2023. Facebook's oldest intern, how a 60-year-old fitness trainer reinvented himself with the most unlikely of companies. And, uh, you know, you, you can even get it for free on the Kindle Unlimited program if you want. You have to pay uh, Amazon for that. Or you can buy it on paperback and get it as well. I recommend the paperback. Uh, you do anything to, uh, can people get autographs for you if they send you a copy of their book and stuff? Yeah, yeah I'd love to. I'd be there honored. you go. There you go. That would be pretty nice. So, Howard, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thanks for inspiring people and giving people hope for the future. And uh, we'll look forward to your work in the future that you'll do. All right, I appreciate that, Chris. And, and I really do. I really hope I gave people some inspiration and motivation to, to make that next step if that's what they want. Perseverance is the key. Thanks, my audience, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, youtube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, the big 130,000 LinkedIn group, the big LinkedIn newsletter. That thing just grows like a weed over there, and you can check out some of the fun stuff that we publish over there. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. And that's.